Rode Wireless Go 2. Pretty excited about this. I have the original one. It's nice because it's simple, it's super compact. But with the two, we have two transmitters. So I could be wearing a microphone and then Dylan could be wearing a microphone. Even though he's all the way over there, we could have a conversation and have both our audios very clear. Right now, Dylan sounds terrible. Say something. Something and stuff. Yeah. Awful, right? We don't like terrible audio. So let's see what we have here. So this must be the receiver. So this will be on the camera and these must be the transmitter. So I'll take one and Dylan will take the other. So these are gonna help protect us against the wind and we're just gonna kind of push this on, snaps in right there. And oh, these actually lock on. The previous one, if you yank down a little bit, it'll pop off. So nice touch. We also have a TRS cable to plug the receiver into the camera and three USB-C cables. So I'm gonna go ahead, hook these up. We are now set up on the A7S and also listening to the audio from this transmitter. How are we sounding? And I also love how low profile this looks on the camera opposed to this thing, which is massive. It's almost as big as the camera and it always draws so much attention. So having something small like this up top for audio, that's cool. When I first got this, I thought this was gonna be just like the original Rode Wireless goes, but with two transmitters, which is cool, right? That's a nice upgrade. Turns out there's a ton under the hood here. Now there's one feature in particular that I love about it. I mean, game changingly awesome. Can't live without it. There's also one problem in here that makes me not really fully trust it in every single type of shoot and situation. So we'll go over all that. But first, let's take these bad boys out on a little field trip. All right, I have the receivers over here. All right, let's go. So we're all charged up and we also have the Rode Lav, which is sold separately. So we have two of them. Also, these are awesome. It's Rycote Undercovers. And basically they're these little stickies that you attach so that you can wear underneath your shirt. Perfect for when you're undercover and about to enter one of the most high security places on planet Earth, the aquarium. Dun dun. All right, so how does it sound with our Top secret microphones. So here I have these glasses. This here, I kind of look like an assassin, you know, like I'm sneaking in here. I got this mic kind of hidden, you know. Like, yeah, sure, I'm just here to read about bird rehabilitation. It's obviously why I came here. Yes, yes. Dylan's gonna do a little voiceover for some of these fish. So oh, I'm so busy today. I don't have time to deal with all these people standing by. Do you not understand the office that I need to go to? The meetings that we gotta have between kibbles and bits? I don't have time for this. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> There's children here. <laughs> They're kind of like the puppies of the sea, huh? He's like, what is this hair? <laughs> I think the coolest part about vlogging with a wireless microphone is you have a lot more freedom on where you place the camera to get good audio. Typically to get good audio, I have to be within three to five feet of the camera. So being able to just plant the microphone somewhere and just step all the way away from the camera to get that big grand wide shot, that's really cool. Oh my gosh, Carrie, look at look at what Carrie has done to the- Doesn't that look better? But the feature I consider to be game changing is not only is this sending the audio signal over to the receiver so the camera can record it, but there's also a audio track being recorded internally, which can be used as a backup, or if this is the only thing you have, you can set it up to record when you turn it on. Now, the more I use this microphone, the more I love the fact that it records audio internally as well as transmitting because now, if there was somebody behind the camera, they could be monitoring my audio. So if there's any issues with like clothing noise or anything like that, they'll be able to let me know right away. And also you don't have to sync the audio if it's recorded straight into the camera. But at the same time, the more distance you have between the camera and the microphone, the more run in could run into static if there's too much interference in the air. Although the Go 2 has been pretty solid of a connection, but you never know. You really want someone monitoring the audio if you're depending on the sound from a law. But right now I'm not too worried about it because I know if I walk away too far from the camera and lose connection or if they're static, I can always go ahead and use the backup audio from the internal microphone. And the other reason that's really useful is because sometimes I don't wanna have to set up a receiver on a camera. Maybe I'm trying to get audio for a drone or anything like that. I can go ahead, turn this on, have this record internal and then sync it afterwards. Now we already talked about how this locks on, which is a big plus because the past one, it would just fall off randomly all the time. So this is much more usable and it's actually really surprisingly good at canceling out wind noise. I wanted to see if I could go a little bit faster with this. So I've tested it on a motorcycle and here's how that sounds. All right, can we hear anything? We're going about 32 miles per hour. I'd be pretty impressed if you can. I'm gonna angle it towards the wind and then now towards me. 
We're dropped down to about 23 miles per hour now. Here, let me get the accelerator. So here we are, a little motorcycle vlog here. How's it sound? Now the biggest issue that I have with these microphones and the only thing that really keeps it from being the best microphones in my opinion is that it's not good at handling loud noises. Probably like a loud talk with a microphone really close like this is probably clipping it so sorry if it sounds terrible. Now here's the thing even if I lower the levels out of the camera or adjust the output out of the receiver or just download the file straight off of this it does the same thing. All right so we're going to do a quick test with these three microphones to see how loud of a noise they can handle. So microphone number one is the built-in microphone and it does have this mode activated which pads it a bit to help reduce it from clipping number two is also a transmitter but this time hooked up to the road lav and next to it in the same position is the same road lav mic but this time hooked up to the tascam dr10l all right dylan talk like you're a bingo announcer at a senior home Okay, we got red five, red five, your red five. Do I see your red five? Actually, this is roulette, I just realized. But yeah, anyway, red five, and then you got a black 22. Okay, we got red five, red five, your red five. Do I see your red five? Actually, this is roulette, I just realized. But yeah, anyway, red five, and then you got a black 22. Okay, we got red five, red five, your red five. Do I see your red five? Actually, this is roulette, I just realized. But yeah, anyway, red five, and then you got a black 22. Now one of the senior ladies is getting out of line and throwing that pudding again. Okay, no more throwing pudding, you got that right now, we're going to bed right now! Okay, no more throwing pudding, you got that right now, we're going to bed right now! Okay, no more throwing pudding, you got that right now, we're going to bed right now! Now you go into the snack room and realize somebody has taken a bite out of your bologna sandwich. You did not just take a bite out of that! I don't get you! You did not just take a bite out of that! I don't get you! You did not just take a bite out of that! I don't care you! Yeah, I think you lost your voice, dude. A little bit, yeah. Dude, no, you... I got that raspy smoker's voice now. <laughs> just been smoking oh, a pack of cigarettes. Dude, you committed to yeah, that. Yeah, you know I work out here in the docks. Okay, so to nobody's surprise, turns out when Dylan loses his temper, he blows out all the microphones in the room along with my eardrums and windows. But I think it's safe to say this internal microphone was the easiest microphone to clip. And this is definitely something I have noticed. And in case you're not familiar with clipping, it's basically when your audio gets so loud that it gets slammed against the ceiling and if you don't have something like a limiter or something to help protect it it's just gonna jam in there and it gives you this really really harsh sound just like no more throwing pudding you got that right now now in my experience is you're definitely less likely to clip once you plug in an external lavalier like this and even when it does clip it doesn't sound as harsh but here's how it sounds no more throwing pudding you got that right now you probably heard a little bit of harshness there but it's not as violently harsh as the internal mic but my favorite I think hands down is the task cam. No more throwing pudding, you got that right now. I have a lot of trust in that thing and unless you have Dylan shouting into it, it really doesn't click. Now I'm at 52 miles per hour and how does it sound? Now I'm at 52 miles per hour and how does it sound? Now I'm at 52 miles per hour and how does it sound? Wow, like, you know, imagine just sticking your head out the window on a freeway, and it's pretty loud, man, it's loud, like, you know, imagine just sticking your head out the window on a freeway, and it's pretty loud, man, it's loud, like, you know, imagine just sticking your head out the window on a freeway, and it's pretty loud. Now, in order to download the audio off of the internal memory, we have to download this app from Rode's website. It's free. Do I need to put in my email? Ugh. Oh, come on, don't act like I'm the first person to ever do that. All right, downloading. Now, the first couple times I tried this, I was having all kinds of issues because I was stuck on this screen. When I looked it up, a ton of other people have been having the same issues. But for me, at least, if I use the USB-C cable that came with the Rode mics, it seems to hook up every time. So I think it might be a little bit specific about what cable is being used. So now we're in. This is our most recent recording here. So we can go ahead, play through it. Let's go ahead and export it. We can go between MP3 
33 or wave. There's also a 32 bit option in here, which I got really excited about thinking I might be able to get a little bit more reach in terms of, you know, audio clipping, but it did, for me, at least it didn't make a difference. So I just exported everything out of 24 bit. Just go ahead and hit export. Dylan, you're usually the one downloading the audio. So you're going to be getting very familiar with this process. The thing that I think you're going to get pissed off about is that you can't batch export. If you record a whole bunch of audio clips, you have to go through individually and we got one clip down. So now you have to go to the next one, hit export, do the same thing. Is there any advantage in not being able to export them all at once? Is there? No, there, no, there should be not. a feature that should just be in here. That should just be like select yeah. these eight clips, export them all, and then it just be a, less of a headache. It's yeah. just tedious to do every single one, especially if you have like 35 clips oh, yeah, of audio. Yeah kind of want to just do it all at once, but this is something that they can update in the software. So hopefully we see that. Now, while we're hooked up to Road Central, I might as well show you a few more things. Let me go into the settings. And this is where you adjust if it's going to record internally. Now, right now I have it on always record. So as soon as you turn this thing on, it starts recording all the way up until you turn it off, even if it's not connected to a transmitter or anything. Like as soon as that light turns on, it's recording everything. And in this mode, it records uncompressed. Now you can see the internal memory is full right now. And just to show you, I'll go ahead and clear it out. But you actually don't have to because basically if the memory in here gets full, it'll just go into a cycle mode where it'll go ahead and keep recording, but delete the oldest audio and it just goes in a cycle like that. Now the other option is to switch from always to backup. Now in this mode, it only starts recording when it detects the receiver being turned on and it stops recording if it turns off. And when you're in backup, Backup mode, you actually do have the option to go into a compressed mode, which will record 43 hours of audio instead of the seven. And of course you could just turn it off entirely. Now for me, I like to just have it on always on because sometimes I like using this thing as an independent recorder and not even bother with the receiver. So I'll just turn it on, record a quick clip real quick and then turn it off. Also check this thing out. So I attach the transmitter onto here like that and then put this cover on. And then all of a sudden I'm like a reporter or the weather man. Welcome to nine o'clock news. But that's one of the things I really like about this is how versatile it is. I can use it as a lavalier. I can use it as a handheld. I could use it with this camera. I could use it with a phone an action camera or even a drone and speaking of drones check out this thing this is the skydio it's the drone that's supposed to fly itself and we're gonna start testing this so if you have any questions about this let us know it doesn't even come with a controller but overall i am super impressed with the road wireless go to there's a ton of features that they list out on their website so if you end up getting it definitely recommend going through that page and learning all the different settings and features for example by default each microphone comes in on different channels so if you have a stereo signal left would be one mic right would be the other which is great because in post you can separate them and only use the audio tracks you need you also have the option to merge the two channels if you're doing like a live broadcast or you're only using one microphone and you could even have one be a safety channel so one audio track is louder than the other and road if you ever make a version three i would like to make a few requests i would love a locking connection right there like the Tascam does because i am always concerned that in my pocket i'm moving around it might become a little bit disconnected and all of a sudden i just have audio of this in my pocket rustling around it does also get a little bit old charging each one of these individually with three different cables but I was looking into this one case that charges them as you store them. So that is something that I may try in the future. But with those minor complaints aside, I am a huge, huge fan of the wireless go to much more of a fan of these than I was with the original wireless goes. These are just so much more capable, much more flexible. So really good job. And I did have to buy this myself. They didn't send this to me. This isn't sponsored or anything like that. I do still plan on keeping that task cam with me, especially if we go to a loud event or environment. But remember that the task Cam is only an internal recorder, so you can't monitor it wirelessly. So that makes it less useful in some ways. And I did also get the Zoom version of it, which also isn't wireless, but it does record 32-bit float, which is really cool. But I hate the design of it. There's a big old switch up front to turn the whole device on and off. And when I first saw that, I was like, oh man, I hope I never accidentally turn it off. And then it happened to me while I was using it on a DJI FPV Q&A video. And that just kind of sucks having to worry about if the device accidentally got turned off so this would be my favorite little wireless self recorder and then the second place would go to 
the Tascam third place to the Zoom, even though the Zoom has 32-bit float, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. You guys asked some questions about these microphones in the last video, so let's see what you're wondering. Portalazzo says, what kind of batteries those mics use? They are internal batteries. So unfortunately, if they die, then you can't just swap out the batteries real quick. You have to actually charge them up. So that is one downside, but the battery life is pretty good. And I tested the battery life because I figured, okay, if it's going to be recording consistently internally, is that going to drain the battery life? So one thing I really realizes if you have it turned on and it's recording internally, but it's not connected to the receiver, then it actually lasted almost 10 hours for me. So that's really cool. And if the receiver is also turned on, I think it uses more battery because it's constantly working to send the audio to the receiver. So in that case, with the backup recording turned on, I was getting under seven hours. So it's a pretty decent battery life. I'm a very passionate user of those microphones. They are really, really something and I just like to see your take on them. I love them. I'm going to be keeping these in my camera bag pretty much at all times now. Captain Jack says, I'm looking into Rode 2 wireless mics for use in weddings. I like the compact size, which I think my clients would also enjoy, especially the bride. I also like that I wouldn't need a backup recorder just in case I get static in the wireless signal. And I plan on at least the officiant being mic'd up with a recorder. I think these are gonna be killer for weddings because at weddings there's so much going on. So you really want tools that are gonna be very simple and these are as simple as they get. And let's say you have the officiant mic'd up and they do their thing, but afterwards you want to take this off and just throw them on guests. You can go ahead, unplug the lavalier and just hook them on. That's something I was doing at the aquarium because Dylan and I were mic'd up, but I wanted to get a few audio bites from Carrie. So I went ahead, unplugged this, threw this on her bag and was able to capture audio and switch it back and forth between different people very fast. The only things I can see going wrong is if the wedding is an all day thing, you want to make sure that you're plugging these in between breaks. And also when everybody gets drunk and the DJ's blasting the music, you may run into issues with clipping with all the loud sounds going on. Donald says those wireless go sound a lot better with the lavalier go mic. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's what you're listening to right now is the transmitter hooked up to the Rode Go Lav. Where did you find Dylan? Is there a Dylan store? I could use my own Dylan for narrating my life. I don't know, they closed the last Dylan store I saw down. It might be kind of hard, but maybe if you look on eBay or something, someone has a good price. Check that out. All right, Dylan, I need a close for this video. Can you do something cool? This just in, it's actually a great day outside. And you know what else is great? You are for staying to this part of the video. So remember to hit like and subscribe right under me. Not actually physically, but actually just under the screen. Do that and you'll get a gold star. And the next time you see it in the night sky, you'll know it's yours. Stay sexy out there. Oh, a little cuttlefish. Look how cute the little cuttlefish are, they're so tiny. And a striped pajama squid. <laughs> that's only slightly embarrassing. Oh, that's the one I was talking to? Yeah, that, that, that was you? Right okay, there. well, yep. in my defense, he is Asian wearing a black shirt. <laughs>